Hello everyone. Today is the 25th of January 2018 in New Zealand and I'm going to talk about debunking the myth that having a cesarean is not really birthing your baby. That's actually something that uh, you hear women say to each other or women talk about themselves and their experience. And it's important that we understand that a number of the myths around childbirth are part of this mean-spirited mummy wars stuff. And the way that I've tried to articulate it is to have, to, when I've heard conversations of women talk about each other, is for them to say, I didn't read anything. I had a home birth. You read everything. You had a hospital birth. And that's that gnarliness that women have always had. Mm, right? And there's definitely come a time where women natural birth advocates are actually saying a cesarean isn't, isn't really birth. And you hear that from women who plan cesareans. There's a lot of guilt around women who want elective cesareans. Now, certainly when I gave birth in 1970, the message from the medical profession, because cesareans were uh, classical cesareans and you were given a general anesthetic and so it was really major abdominal surgery just like having your appendix out was major abdominal surgery I had mine out last year and it was keyhole surgery through my navel even though it was major abdominal surgery it certainly had changed from what people who had appendicitis in the 70s had in terms of surgery so Cesareans in 1970 were around 4.5%, and now they're 32%. Now, how did that happen? That actually happened because women, people of my generation, didn't want to hear that message once the cesarean, always a cesarean. And it was a major abdominal surgery, and women were left with horrible scars up their belly from their pubic bone to their navel. And it was a period of time where bikinis were becoming popular. And so women were saying to doctors, I don't want to be left with this disfiguring scar. And I don't want to be knocked out because fathers were coming into labors and women wanted their the fathers to come into a cesarean. And they wanted to be awake for the birth. And these are all right, good things. This is true. So the medical profession changed. They developed the bikini cut, the low-lying cesarean, which turned out to be safer because women did want to try to have trials of labor or what is now known as VBACs. And so the medical profession shifted with the demands from the consumer. They developed spinals and now it's epidurals. Women are awake and they have low-lying cesareans, they recover faster, they can try for a VBAC, even though there are a lot of doctors who are still uncomfortable with that. So the, the cesareans changed, they became safer, they became easier. Safer and easier means that they are done more frequently, and that is coupled with the persistent fetal monitoring that started to happen. And why did that happen? Well, because they used to do four hourly or two hourly checks and they found out that some babies developed a problem or died in between those periods. So the decision was to constantly fetal monitor people. So the way that we got to 32% cesarean rate had to do with making it safer, making it easier, and monitoring babies more carefully. It was coupled with something else because there is a global rise in cesareans. And when I started to be involved in birth in the early 1970s, there were all these worldwide conferences that weren't just about maternal health, but they were about home births, they were about midwives, they were about natural birth. And there was a man who was very well known in the natural birth movement called Marston Wagner, and he was a WHO representative. And WHO has a makes global comments about childbirth. And back then, they were basically saying the cesarean rate should be about three percent, 
that that's really that about that 97 percent of births even if they were just totally left alone would be safe that was back in 1970 but by the 80s that had changed to what it is now which is 10 to 15 percent and the reason it changed is that the women in south america particularly wanted to have elective cesareans because they wanted to protect their vaginas from damage because they felt that their sexual relationship with their partner would deteriorate if giving birth made them slack and, and open in their vaginas. Now, honestly, swear to God, I have lived through this and you think, well, how do you put this stuff together? And that is a reality. Upwardly mobile people in developing countries seek more medical care. There was a group from Denmark that had a lot, at that point, of Sri Lanka um, refugees because of the war. And the midwives in Denmark were floored that they were the first women who wanted pain relief. Well, of course, because modern people idealize or fantasize about traditional birth. The natural birth movement thinks that we all birthed in the, by the rice paddy and got up immediately and went back to work. They think that, that it, it's the medical profession that has made birth more problematic. I have spent a huge part of my life living and working in traditional communities, unrelated to birth, totally unrelated to birth. None of these skills in birthing better come from traditional women because they don't even know they have a cervix. So they are doing their best to understand this phenomena called pregnancy and childbirth. But in traditional communities, people are afraid of pregnancy and terrified of birth until it's over with. And they're terrified of the newborn period until the baby has survived. They're terrified of, of the early childhood because 25 to 30 percent of their children and everywhere around the world died until immunizations and antibiotics became globally available. So those things were not available in the third world. And when people moved up and became socially, had social mobility and could have access to the modern medical care, just like they wanted access to electricity and running water, they went to it just like my grandmother who died from pneumonia before penicillin. Do you think she would have taken penicillin? Of course she would have. So the rise in elective cesareans come from a social thing, not from more babies gonna die. So the question is, is what has really happened? The once a cesarean, always a cesarean has shifted. Women can choose to have a vaginal birth after a cesarean. But that period also coincided with this shift from a skills-focused childbirth approach from Lamaze and Bradley and Grantley Dick Reed because focusing skills only on women who wanted a natural birth, a pain-free labor, and less medical care also failed. Not because skills failed, but because skills shouldn't be connected to outcome. That's a happy side effect. If women manage birth labor better and they get their baby out more effectively with less trauma to themselves and the baby, then they will have less medical interventions that are, that are given to women because the labors are delayed and women labor for a long, long, long period of time and the second stage is delayed. They push for a long, long, long period of time or they don't cope with a natural occurring pain and it is perceived of as suffering. So those three things, delay in first stage, delay in second stage and suffering are the reasons that the medical profession is trying to help. Do we like their help? We have ambivalence about their help. Some people just love their help and some people go, it's all being imposed. It's all interventions that are unnecessary. But we, as women, globally, first of all, don't know we should become skilled. So there is no local, regional, national, global expectation that women prepare their body for birth and learn the skills to 
have a more effective, manageable birth. They just, 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 there's no message. That's what our trust, common knowledge. Notice the, what it's called, common knowledge. We're all one humanity. So we can all prepare our body in the exact same way and learn the exact same effective skills. That's what Birthing Better Families did. They created this amazing extensive system that nobody has an interest in. And I want to tell you, people don't have an interest. I don't know why. You'd think that everybody would be running to this idea that we as pregnant birthing women and the people who help us should become skilled to birth our babies. It's the premium activity of our lives. We should be highly skilled to do it. So when the skills were dismissed because they weren't achieving the goal of a natural birth, pain-free labor, and less medical care, it went to this present choice-focused trend, which is make a birth plan because women know what kind of birth they want. So that women were then being more able to choose that they wanted to have a VBAC, which if if they weren't, if they had a medically, a real medical reason for cesarean, they were not so upset. When they aren't, weren't certain, because that's what started to happen as it became easier to do cesareans and monitor babies, they were more nervous and there were more cesareans performed. And then women began to feel six months later, this wasn't necessary. But they had to, un women have to understand that the cause of that was because women lacked skills. So the medical profession is seeing these long births, seeing these long second stages, seeing women not cope, and they are doing their best to solve the problem. And that's a cesarean. And women in third world countries who want to be upwardly mobile don't want their vaginas damaged from birth. And Vaginas are damaged by from birth if women don't know how to prepare them. My goodness. So you can have a first, second, third, or fourth degree tear. Women in Ethiopia and places like that have fistulas where they're pooping out their vaginas. It is not true that women just normally stretch. So you have to understand that the rise in cesarean is a marriage between us as women who are not skilled because nobody is telling us to become skilled and the medical profession that is trying to save us and stop problems. So, but what happens then is women start talking to one another and there is this idealizing of natural birth. Would birthing better families like all of us to have effective labors and manage births well and for any medical care to be able to be handled within a, a labor and a vaginal birth, it's pretty ideal, but sure, why not? But the reality is, is that most of the cesareans now, they're not unnecessary, they are caused because we lack skills. So our responsibility, if we want to change that, is that we become highly skilled as a gender when we're pregnant, when we're giving birth. So you are responsible for giving that message. I, I can't keep giving it any more than I'm trying to give it. Do we care whether you use Birthing Better from other skills resources? We'd love you to use Birthing Better because we know why it's an evolution from the original ones. And, and But any skills better than none. So use everything that you can. But what's happened in this idealization of natural birth is women have become mean to each other and they've become mean within their own heads. He was a cesarean, she was my home birth. We have to stop this. We, we put too much emphasis on the birth and that changed in my generation. Women of my generation before just did accept birth the way it was because their emphasis was on having a baby, becoming a parent. Now the emphasis is on the birth. And that started to change in the 70s when people started to try to unravel their emotional problems and primal screaming and rebirthing became popular. It was as though the birth was the only place that we people were traumatized. And that's not accurate. So what do I try to do? I try to debunk the myths. 
because as I became involved in the childbirth conversation in the 1970s, this stuff started to get put in place. And all I could think of was, this is crazy. This is crazy, right? And you, to have stopped skills from marching side to side with choice was a horrible mistake by birth, natural birth advocates, a horrible mistake. They should have realized that skills shouldn't have been targeted just to achieve a normal birth, less medical care, and a pain-free labor. My goodness, I've been in a few of them. They're rare. Many more of women manage them, but they manage labor because they are skilled, not because they've been instinctive. They've done it because they have focused on their breathing and controlled their breathing. They've focused on their relaxation, made certain that they are relaxed in their pelvis. They've focused on their positions and made certain that they are open. They may not have been taught anything. They may have discovered it at the time of their labor, but that's not good enough. We have to be able to pass on generation to generation how to prepare our body for birth and how to cope and manage this really intense experience and how to actively work to help our baby open up, come down and through our body. So what we have to say in this, the myth, is if you have a planned cesarean, that's your business. You can still love to prepare your body for the birth of your baby because your body is still preparing to labor and have a vaginal birth. And you can use these skills on the way to the hospital as a way of of doing your labor. You can use these skills while being prepped. That is your transition. Use these skills while you're birthing your baby, during the surgery, with your partner. This is your baby's birth. Skillfully birth your baby. You are birthing your baby. Your baby is being born, whether it is by cesarean or not. And as women, we have to stop being mean to each other and being mean to our children. I mean, really, we have to stop this. And we have to see that every family's baby's birth is equally important as ours. And we have to stop having judgment about what is a right birth or a wrong birth. We have to stop having judgment as to whether your, where your birth falls in the scale of good births or bad births. We have to stop loading the medical profession with expectations that they have to provide for us the birth that we want. We have to expect of ourselves to be more highly skilled to birth our babies. And we have to commit to using our skills no matter how our baby's birth unfolds. There's no way to know what your birth is going to be like. You have to be a willing participant to birth your baby in a skillful manner so that you know in your lifetime that that is what you were capable of doing and chose to do. Will there continue to be a rise of cesareans worldwide? In China, there's already a 50% rate. I don't know. We certainly want to do something about improving birth experiences by having everybody skilled. And the happy consequence is, is that skilled mothers are less likely to have delays in first stages, delays in second stages, and they're definitely more likely to be able to cope and manage and deal with and work through, stay on top of and in control of the natural occurring pain of contractions. But it takes you to build this village takes you to tell other people. Those who watch these videos, share them on other websites. Tell other people to watch them. Tell other people to take actions. My goodness, this is what social media is all about. We can't have websites like Improving Birth or Positive Birth or, or VBAC that just is about what they have to do or that our home birth is the solution to this. It isn't the solution. The solution is for all of us to become skilled, both the women who are pregnant and giving birth and the fathers and others who are helping us. Their job is to help us stay on top and in control. So another myth tomorrow, if you've had a cesarean, you've birthed your baby. And if you end up with an unplanned cesarean, you're birthing your baby. 
we just hope that you know, stay engaged and use your skills. So take care. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.